It's just after 9 p.m. and dinner's already over. There are no major events and everyone returned to their rooms. It's too early to go to bed, so what should I do in the meantime? Oh, we have only one option. Go out for a walk. Alone. What? The moment I decided to go outside, I began to feel sick. Is it a premonition or fear of something I already know? It's time to go, yet this fear is slowly creeping in on me. Struggling to stay on my feet, I reach for the door handle. One last time. Looking back just once, I make sure the image of the room as I leave it stays firmly in my mind. It was a freezing cold night. The moment I went outside, it felt like I had been thrown into a different world. The house was the only source of definite reality, while the rest of Fuyuki was an unsteady illusion. You. Go away, you. Go away, you. Go away. What? I could hear the panting of wild beasts in the mist. There isn't a single sign of human presence in town. I don't know who is behind it, but whoever it is, he is finally making his move. Kill you, kill you, kill you. A world where everything is extinct. The house before me is in shambles. A broken door. Shattered windows. A yard smeared with blood. Should I look inside? I will find the scene of a dissection. This is all very strange. Especially the fact that there is not a single piece of flesh to be found anywhere. Yet, the course of events that transpired here is painfully clear. <coughs> Emotions I have never experienced before excite my brain. Anger and hatred mixed together in just the right proportions. I hate this mass murderer that I haven't even seen yet. Can't see, can't see, I can't see anything. I trace the reverberating panting. The soundless howling is directed at me. A barrage coming from every direction. Hostility and pleading, hatred and envy. I feel sick down to my stomach. Hate you, hate you, hate you, hate you. The howling changes into roaring. It's hard to believe, yet there is no doubt. The source of the howling is crouching in front of me. I know I've seen it before, yet my memory fails me. Just a little more. The moment the clock strikes midnight, somebody will tell me and I'll remember. The thing howls again, making a screeching sound. A frequency outside of my hearing range. A howl for sure, but in a voice that no human could hear. Do you think only you will be saved? The beast raises its head. Its eyes lock onto me and it comes crawling towards me, its claws screeching against the ground. I jump backwards to avoid it. A wild swipe of the beast's claws. If I get hit by that gelatine of a claw, I'm as good as dead. I'm better than I was back then, though. This is mere child's play compared to the beating Saber bestows upon me. Even with no chance of hitting me, the beast is relentless. Its arms, swinging more violently with every blow, make it seem like there is no end to its vitality. Only you, only you, only you. The stream of undulations it showered me with only added to this darkness. 
I could have let it keep going, but I counter-attacked out of fear. I moved sideways to dodge the claws and kicked its wide open side with all my might. I knew it. It wasn't that much of a threat. The unidentified beast coughs painfully on its force, unable to get up. Grr and. But that can't be right. Should they happen to meet this creature, most people would be dead without as much as fight. But that's limited only to small areas. This thing can't empty out the whole town in just one hour. Grant. Are you? I was going to finish. I realize that my surroundings are now flooded with these beasts. Well, that's not good. A choir of resentment sings in unity. The whole park is crawling with them. Damn it, with this many, 20 minutes, let alone an hour, should be more than enough to clean up the town. The tsunami steadily closes in on me. It reminds me of ants swarming over a corpse, or a person thrown into the Buddhist hell's mountain of needles. <laughs> Those claws will tear me limb from limb. My body, eyeballs, skull, everything will be skewered. I start praying, even though what's about to come is inevitable. Ran. Oh, shut the hell up! If you're going to kill me, just do it. Repeating yourselves like idiots. If you have something to say, just spit it. What? And who might you be? <laughs> Reflexively, I raise my head. A beautiful voice, resounding with silver tones. Right in the middle of a world buried in beasts. Was the start of it all. What? I know her. I know this woman. But that would be an hour later. There's just no consistency to this. It's frustrating. I have all the pieces to the puzzle, but... The horde of beasts is approaching. There is no escape. Death is upon me. Oh well, even if I do manage to run away, the same thing will happen again. A prayer like ultimatum. Her eyelids finally close and Emiya Shido is taken apart by the gospel singing chorus of beasts. The cluster of malice continues to spread. On the night of October 11, Fuyuki met its end by a mountain of piled up corpses. Bad end. Restart. Heaven's Fear 5 end. Exit. Heaven's Fear 5. Well, looks like we are back at the title screen. So, let's restart. It's October 8th again! And there is a uh, tiger. But we have already talked to her, so let's see what else is out here. There's something new at the school. Yeah, let's go to school. Go to school. So, who should we talk to? Tiger or Issei? Well, we just talked to Issei not that long ago, so let's talk to Tiger. 
in the senior's classroom. Ohayo, Gozaimasu, Fujimura Sensei. Oh, hiyo! Minna genki shite ru? A relaxed morning greeting that does not befit a teacher. Well, it is Fujine after all. Looking sharp really isn't like her, so it would bother me if she did. Fujine noticed me inclining my head in doubt. Here we're strictly teacher and student, but it's just before homeroom and class hasn't started yet. We see each other all the time and know each other's problems all too well. In that sense, you could even call it an ideal teacher student relationship where nothing needs to be hidden. Well, no, you couldn't. Being like siblings is a bit too close. Fujine keeps lamenting, but she doesn't sound very serious. I suppose that's why students find her easy to approach for all sorts of advice. It's one of her virtues. Early morning at school and this is what we end up discussing. All of a sudden, a figure walks past like a shadow. This is Kuzuki, the strict ethics teacher. It's said that students admire him more with every year they spent in the school, and I was no exception. As I went into my third year, I began to appreciate his style. あと定例の教職会議がいつになってました。今日の夕刻です。3年の進路指導のこともあります。わかりました。進路は大変ですね。でも、鈴木先生は教え子さんたちに慕われてますから。The Fujine is holding a very professional conversation. I almost instinctively rub my eyes to make sure I'm not dreaming. Don't just dump it on me. But I can't horse around like usual in front of Kuzuki. A Kuzuki heads towards the classroom. The moment his slim figure disappears down the hallway, the two of us breathe a collective sigh of relief, and she pats me on the shoulder. The idea of being called a girl apparently pleases her, so she repeats it a few times. Looks like we wasted all of the pre homeroom time on this. The she dashes forward with an odd battle cry. No way! 
What happened to the series teacher just now? Ah, Sakura is here now. And it doesn't seem like I can leave, so let's talk to her. I stopped by the archery dojo. During the lunch break, Sakura does the preparations for club activities here. Just as I thought, the new archery club captain was already hard at work. I've heard that at the champion schools, even at lunchtime, they take their bows and try to fill up the training logs. The archery club at Tomurahara is normally that strict, but that can't be said about this season. From the rumors I've heard, she's probably talking about Mitsuzuri's younger brother. At any rate, Sakura's smile looks promising. Sakura's lunch boxes. Well, that sure is an awful lot of food for just one person. いいのか。俺の分の弁当あるのか。はい。ちゃんと先輩の分も用意してあります。ここに誘おうと思ってたところにちょうど来てくれたんでよかったです。それは助かる。ではありがたく桜のお弁当をいただきます。はい。では先
all of that changed when Sakura came. Fujine, like, hetta sure to three shoes, the same thing, I don't think it's worth it. So, is it? Quite Fujimura Sensei was on the other side, but I think it's a bit of a difference. I mean, if you're happy, you're happy, you're happy, Fujine. そうだ先輩今度は藤村先生のお弁当も作った方がいいですかね間違いなく喜ぶが甘やかしちゃいかん癖になると過去の経験が物語っているはあいろいろ大変だったんですね先輩も。I nodded as I chewed thoroughly on the sweet salmon, still full of flavor despite being chilled. With a Japanese-style lunchbox this good, Sakura's cooking is exceeding all expectations. Rider, mo, o bento o tsukureru yo ni nara nai kana? Dou daro na. Ieba mokumoku to challenge shite kureru nda kedo, nanka gimu te kanji de tanoshi sou janai shi. ライダーと一緒にお料理できれば楽しいんですけどねあでもやっぱり先輩と一緒が一番勉強になります Looks like Sakura thought she hurt my feelings and is trying to hide it with a smile It's fine, even with three people in the kitchen it'll work out somehow Continuing to consume our respective lunches I suddenly noticed something Could it be? Sakura もしかして弁当を間違えてないかえそうですかでもお箸は合ってますよあれそうかなんかさくらの弁当の方が大きい気がしたから It may be because it was on top of Sakura's small thighs but her lunchbox looked really large でも間違えても同じですよこれ大きさも中身も同じ Ah, that must be why it looked bigger. Wait, but then. Ah, te kiri, Sakura wa sukunai no kana to ka. Ah, demo, hora, watashi to onaji ryo da to senpai, gogo ni onaka hetchou janai desu ka. Dakara. So ka. Demo, so naru to Sakura ni wa ouku nai ka. Her lunch had at least 80% more than the amount I had. I often hear about girls skipping lunch entirely, but... Hmm... So, the secret to losing weight isn't cutting back on what you eat, but rather using more energy. Wait, but it doesn't seem like Sakura is really worried about that. In fact... Sakura is still growing. When she tells me something like that, it makes me wonder what a part of her she is referring to. Without realizing it, I stop moving my chopsticks and look down. This is not good. This fantasy is not appropriate for a sacred archery dojo. Senpai, sake, shio ga tsuyo sugimashita? Aya, bento wa umai shi, sakura no ryori mo jōzu da. Sodachi zakari itte, hora, chotto kangaete ta dake. Eto, hora, nanda, kono toshi ni natte, mada sega nobiru no kana to kana? 昔より先輩、背が伸びてますよね。これからも伸びるんじゃないでしょうか。もっと欲しいんだよな、背。こればっかりは鍛えて伸びるものじゃないから仕方ないか。気にしすぎですよ。今でも先輩はしっかりしてて、頼りがいがありますから。It's blatant flattery, but I'm still glad to hear it. Right now, there's nothing I can do but stay focused. If I become strong enough to lift Sakura up with one arm, maybe I'd be able to accept her compliments sincerely. Ah, let's go to the kitchen. Hoshi, hoshi. 
まだ時間があるしゆっくり一服してから戻ろうかはい先輩パパスクールパートタイムジョブオーケー Just a normal day It's just after 9 pm and dinner's already over. There are no major events and everyone returned to their rooms. It's too early to go to bed, so what should I do in the meantime?、Uh, let's go out for a walk. Alone. Okay, this time let's check out the South Residential. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong here. No signs of life in this district is business as usual. No screams nearby and no howling beasts either. Perhaps due to the white moonlight, the town looks brighter than usual. I leave the western style residential district. On the way back, I notice something red out of the corner of my eye. There are one or two brand new post boxes. <laughs> 